What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome back to another installment in my Celebrating Disney series where I review and celebrate all things Disney animated and live action under the main Disney banner. We got a live action review this week and it's yet another live action remake and this was the movie that pretty much popularized the idea of Disney remaking animated classics in the live action movies. This movie made a ridiculous amount at the box of office over a billion dollars and the reviews for it weren't even that good. This is my review of the 2010 remake of Alice in Wonderland. So Alice in Wonderland was released in 2010. It was Disney's live action adaptation of the 1951 animated classic, a movie I've also reviewed on Celebrating Disney, which I'll leave the link to the playlist below. Of course, lo loosely based on the novel of the same name by Lewis Carroll. The film adaptation, the live action remake, was directed by Tim Burton. He later went on and directed Disney's live action remake of Dumbo. But you all know who Tim Burton is. He's directed so many iconic films in the last couple decades, including Edward Scissorhands, Beetlejuice, Batman, Batman Returns, Ed Wood, Sweeney Todd, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Frank and Weenie, and many, many more. Definitely obsessed with that gothic horror, and he's definitely one of the most visually imaginative directors that we've ever had in the film industry. I usually tend to enjoy Tim Burton's work. So, how does he tackle Alice in Wonderland? Let's find out together. In Alice in Wonderland, Alice, now 19 years old, returns to the whimsical world she first encountered as a child and embarks on a journey to discover her true destiny. Alice here is played by Mia Wasikowska. The movie also stars Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter. Anne Hathaway as the White Queen, and Helena Bonham Carter as the Red Queen. So I remember when the trailers for this movie first came out. I can't believe this is about 10 years ago now, which is really crazy. Because I remember this movie coming out like it was yesterday. So I remember seeing the trailers, and I was naturally intrigued by this film. I think this was at a phase where I kind of I felt like I outgrew the animated Disney classic, so I was curious how they would do Alice in Wonderland in the live action medium. I uh, finally saw it at the we had a dollar theater. We saw it months after it first came out. I think at the time I'm like, it was good. It was weird, but it was good. Watched it a few years later. I mean, it was watchable. Nothing great. And then obviously when that Disney craze started to kick back in and I started obsessively rewatching the animated classics, I eventually grew to love the animated Alice in Wonderland. It was never one of my favorites as a kid, but the more I've seen the animated Alice in Wonderland, it's now one of my absolute favorite Disney films. I just love how nonsensical and bonkers that movie is and how it embraces just the insanity of that world in a short amount of time. So on paper, this sounds like a genius movie. Tim Burton directing Alice in Wonderland, known for his obsessive weirdness. I think you think he'd do great on this movie. And I will say right off the bat, the movie looks cool visually. Yeah, the, the CGI is very overabundant. Uh, some of it, I don't think, has 100% aged well, unfortunately, but, I mean, it still looks neat to watch. There's some neat little visual styles in there, and the movie does look good technically. The costume design, the Danny Elfman score is pretty solid. I didn't mind looking at this movie. Not uh, Sometimes the colors are a little too muted for Wonderland, but you know what? It's Tim Burton. He embraces his weirdness and it's visually cool yet again. I'm perfectly fine with the way this movie looks. Could have been a lot better if they mixed the CG and practical, but I'll take it. The visuals are fine. And then um, I did enjoy some of the actors in this film uh, on this rewatch. Uh, not Some of them are very cartoonish. Uh, yeah, Johnny Depp is the Mad Hatter. I'm kind of mixed. I've been more mixed on his performance as the Mad Hatter recently. It's kind of like 
Jack Sparrow, but as the Mad Hatter, I don't think it always works. But on the surface, he's fine. He's surfaceable. He's done a lot better. But this is, I think, when people were starting to see, I think, the mixed aspects of Johnny Depp as an actor and not, like, the Oscar caliber Johnny Depp in decades prior. Uh, we also got, I mean... I enjoy Helena Bonham Carter as the Red Queen. I thought she was deliciously over the top, like she always does, and I did enjoy that. I love hearing Alan Rickman's voice, rest in peace, as the Caterpillar. I did enjoy that. And there are some neat little voice appearances throughout the film. Um, I also have to give props to I think Christopher Lee voices a Jabberwocky in this. And that's pretty cool to hear. I also, and I think the scene stealer is actually Crispin Glover, who plays uh, the Knave of Hearts, uh, the lover of the Red Queen. I thought he was deliciously over the top. And I always love seeing Crispin Glover on screen, especially since I'm a big fan of him in Back to the Future. So it's cool seeing him in a Disney movie, which is just so awesome. And he just... Hams his part to the max. I wished he had a little more screen time than what he already has. But unfortunately, Alice in Wonderland is a movie where the more I watch it, the less I like it. And I think it comes to me being a huge fan of the animated classic. I think I try to watch him as its own movie. And yes, it is its own movie. It does kind of feel like a sequel to the original film because it's Alice returning back to Wonderland from when she was a kid. But my issues with the movie rely on several things. One is Alice herself. And I have nothing against Mia Wasikowska. I've seen her give some solid performances. I liked her in Crimson Peak, the Guillermo del Toro film. I thought she was pretty good in that film. Here, I don't know if it was bad direction or bad writing, but I she is very bland in this movie. And I think a lot of it has, she does a lot of blank stares in this film, and it doesn't really help the character out. I think she's the one who is the least, she seemed the least invested in the material she was given. I think a lot of it had to do with the overabundance of CG, because... You expect to be immersed in this world, and she's just like, Oh, that's there. That's there. And if I was in that situation, I'd be like, Wow, this is a neat, trippy little world. This is neat. And she doesn't really pull it off as well. And my other big issue with this movie is just how muddled the script is, unfortunately. What I love about the original Alice in Wonderland film is how nonsensical it is. All the characters in that world, from the Mad Hatter to the Cheshire Cat to the Queen of Hearts, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, all those characters are all nonsensical. They don't rely on logic and they don't have any rules. They'll say one thing, contradict themselves the next, say ridiculous things, and counterbalancing that with Alice, who has the rules and the logic and everything, just made for an entertaining movie. But here, the problem with this movie lies in the fact that they ditched the nonsense of Wonderland. Uh, Wonderland, in this movie, the characters, they have rules, they have kingdoms, they have politics, and they have tyrannical rulers conquering everything, and you have the other characters wanting to strike back, and they have a prophecy about a chosen one who has to slay the Jabberwocky, and everything is right in the world of Wonderland. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. And it, it just, it takes away from what made the original Alice in Wonderland so fun. This is a bland version. It's, it's like the fantasy hero's journey fantasy template, but they shoehorn Alice in Wonderland in there. And for this story, that just doesn't work. And just the reinventions, I guess, of the characters don't always work. Because now that they're not as nonsensical, they still break their own rules. And it makes the characters come out as hypocrites. Like the Cheshire Cat at one point says, I never get involved in politics. A scene later, he's discussing strategies about how to attack the White Queen or the Red Queen. And then the White Queen, I hadn't brought up her yet, play by Anne Hathaway. Uh, she's a character who's so nice and kind, and she has those vows where she's not 
harming anybody, but then you see her fix a meal and one of her ingredients is severed human fingers. So clearly she's a hypocrite and is just as messed up as the Red Queen. And speaking of Anne Hathaway, I think... I, th I, never, I don't know about her in this movie. Her performance was very weird. I don't think she was as great as she could have been. And I really like Anne Hathaway. She's definitely come along in recent years as an actress. And this was definitely one where I just didn't really feel it. I think it was because I don't like I didn't like her character because of what I just mentioned. And I just don't think she's that well fleshed out of a character. I think she's very pale compared to how over the top the Red Queen is. Played by Helena Bonham Carter. So I do have a lot of issues with this movie. And then, of course, they do a lot of bizarre elements throughout this movie. I mean, there's imagery in this film that definitely pushes the PG a little too far. Like, there's a scene where Alice crosses a moat filled with a lot of decapitated heads of the Red Queen. That's a cool little visual, but I think it might be a little too much for kids, honestly. And then... Well, I gotta bring up Johnny Depp's little break dance at the end of the movie, and that's like the big what moment. And what's even more messed up is the dance is called the Father Wagon. And the first time I heard somebody say that in this movie, it sounded like another similar four letter F word or wagon. And I was just like, Stop saying that. It sounds too dirty for a Disney movie. And it's weird. But it's Futter Wagon. And that dance is just ridiculous. And that always takes me out of the movie every time I see Alice in Wonderland. I didn't like it the first time. And I especially don't like it this time. That dance is ridiculous. I'm also a little ticked off that they gave the great Christopher Lee... An epic role of voice at the Jabberwocky, and he only gets one line. That's definitely quite an insult to Christopher Lee. He was a legendary actor who did so many great villainous roles over the years. You only give him one voice line. You should have embraced it a little more, movie. Especially since Tim Burton loved working with Christopher Lee over the years, too. That just messed up on so many levels. I don't hate Tim Burton because this movie, it's not a movie that I feel like killed his career. He did make some good movies after Alice in Wonderland. Some fans considered Alice in Wonderland a career killer, but I've gone on and enjoyed movies after this. Like, I, I love Frank and Weenie, Big Eyes, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I even like Dumbo more than Alice in Wonderland. I thought Dumbo was a really good movie, and I have a review of that on Celebrating Disney as well. I think Alice in Wonderland's fault, I think it has to go with the script, and just, I think it's lack of imagination and nonsense. I think if it embraced the nonsensical nature of the animated counterpart, and with the Tim Burton weirdness, I think it would have been a lot more brilliant. But no, we got a stale movie of fantasy nonsense and bland prophecy chosen one stuff that... Harry Potter did better, and Narnia did better, and Star Wars did better, and this is a pretty bland movie, honestly, and I like the movie less and less and less. I can't really recommend this film. I know there's fans of it, and that's perfectly fine, but for me, it's definitely much inferior to the original film. At least it does have some cool visual moments in there. And some pretty solid performances that's not the main cast. Like, some of the supporting actors I like, but the movie in general is just not good. I'm sorry. I'm going to give Alice in Wonderland a 2.5 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 42 out of 100. I've just realized that between watching Maleficent recently, plus Maleficent 2... And now Alice in Wonderland. I noticed the screenwriter did all three of those movies, Linda Wolverton. And she wrote animated, the scripts for animated classics such as Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King. Has she reached a selling out phase at this point? Because all three of those movies I don't think are that good. What happened, Linda? So that wraps up my review of Alice in Wonderland as part of my celebrating Disney series. 
where I review and celebrate all things Disney, regardless of quality. This series is meant to celebrate the legacy of Disney, their past, their present, their future, their animated and live action films under the main Disney banner. Like I said earlier, I'll leave a link in the description below for my playlist of this series where I have my animated reviews, the live action reviews of movies I've done in the past. If you're a hardcore Disney fan, I'm sure there's something you'll enjoy. And I'll leave the link in the description below for you to see more. Every week I alternate between animated and live action movies. The animated movies are going to be in theatrical release order. Or chronological order because some will be direct video sequels. We're all today between those, the animated classics, and Pixar. The live action reviews are more freestyle and are prone to request. If you'd like me to tackle any Disney film in the future that's live action, don't be shy to share your thoughts in the, or in the comments below, and I'll keep them under consideration and figure out when they'll be in future installments of Celebrating Disney. Join me next week on Celebrating Disney where I'll be reviewing another animated classic and it'll be a review of Robin Hood. Definitely look forward to that review coming next week. But if you have seen this version of Alice in Wonderland, let me know down in the comments below did you follow the film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. And if your comments are respectful, your comments could be potentially seen in future comment shout out videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button to see more content, and a notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!